Welcome back. So this video will be dedicated to the uh, configuration menu, which is the, uh, the hardcore back end of uh, the inner workings of this machine. So how you can get um, some various variables set to your liking. Um, so currently the machine's off to access this configuration menu. It's a, just a matter of pushing in the rotary switch here. It's got a got a clickable button. So hold it in while we power the machine on. Machine's going on now. So you'll see it says end. So that's how we would get out of the configuration menu. Um, I'll see if I can load in a picture on the on the screen, or maybe even do this. So this is the um, pictorial um, description of what the uh, what the configuration menu is. So at the moment on the on the left here, we've got end. Got the TRD mode, CFG for configuration, JOL, which is a locking mode, uh, the, the code to unlock the machine, um, and then the service menu, the SRU, you can do some other things there. So um, it's just a matter of following the arrows. So if you need information on what each of these three letter codes mean, they're all in the book. right here. So currently we're on end to cycle through the menus. Here we are, we're on TRD. That's a torch configuration menu. Um, so this allows you to change the features of the torch buttons. So um, using the various buttons on the torch, at the moment the machine is supplied with a, uh, a two button EWM torch, uh, which has a main feature and then a secondary button, button, button one and button two. So you can tell the machine to a degree what you want these buttons to do. So that can be adjusted through the torch mode. Um, so to access the torch mode, you push the button. Currently we're on torch mode one, two, three, four, 11, 12, 13, 14. So each one does different things. So one is the factory set for that. So I'll just leave it there. UUD is the up or down speed, so this is um, a feature that relates to the uh, uh, a, a value. So when you have the machine set up where you bump up and down amperage using torch buttons or rocker switches on a torch, um, if you've got a torch like that, of course, um, this will tell you what the current is. So um, the higher this number, uh, the more amperage it responds to. So increase the value as a rapid current change, uh, decrease the value as a slow current change. So we've got a set right in the middle. DL is um, uh, another torch feature. Um, not particularly sure what this one is. So we've bumped back up in upper level, up into the TRD mode. So now we're in configuration mode. So we'll hit the button to enter into that. So ABS is the absolute value setting. So this is something which I turned on. The factory value for it is off. So what the absolute value does is when you have an amperage and you have a secondary amperage, if you set this at 100, the factory setting would ask you what percentage of that amperage, that 100 amps, would you want to have as a base current. So in my case, if I set that to 100 amps and I make that 50%, obviously 50% of 100 is 50. I don't like that, that's a bit too much mental gymnastics for me, so um, what I like to do is I like to have absolute values which the machine is set up with. So if I want that to be 50, or that to be 100, and I want that to be 50, that becomes 100, that becomes 50. Likewise, I'm not going to calculate in my head what, you know, 30% of, you know, 123 is. It's not my not my favourite thing to do, so I'm not going to be um, tied to that kind of um, thinking when doing a welding task. So, um, absolute values can either be on or off, on or off. Oops. Oh, here we are. We jumped. We jumped forward. So the last one was TAS. So that's a tick anti-stick function which was on. 
So uh, TIG anti stick means that the um, the, the tungsten will um, the current will be stopped, or the the tungsten will be made electrically dead um, if a stick condition is found, which it happens to everyone. You dip a tungsten. Um, how bad it is depends on you know a few factors, but this can help to limit the uh, catastrophe of that. Um, bumping forward to the SBA, which is the uh, uh, feature that I accidentally shot forward to. So SBA is the timeout feature. So in the previous video or the other video, depending on how I edit these up, the machine went to sleep. So this gives us the ability to uh, turn the sleep function off, make it a five minute time frame of idle before it goes to sleep, 10, 15, 20, and beyond, up to an hour. Um, five minutes is a pretty good time. Um, EWM has something that they've called Blue Evolution. That's a uh, like some sort of elect, uh, elect electricity saving, environmentally friendly uh, thing. So uh, for me and what I do, having um, a power saving is nice to have, but it's not a necessary to have. Um, when you're like a big factory and you've got 15 of these things and you're paying lots of people to do work and you've got a machine that's drawing power that isn't actually in its arc on state and making the company money um, yeah that's a that's a that's a cost so having uh, features like that can be of benefit um, push the button here so we've got the next one which is PU0 this is pulsed TIG welding which is the uh, uh, thermic welding process that we spoke about so you've got the ability to turn on and off the pulse the, the pulse as the current ramps up from its starting amperage to its peak amperage so this uh, you can either let's just say you're doing uh, pulsed, automatic pulse DC, uh, DC welding. Um, when you start out, you might be welding at a starting amperage, let's just say that was 50 amps, and you want to bring it up to say 100, um, and you're in pulse mode. So this will pulse all the way up to here, and it will pulse up here, and it will pulse all the way down. When you turn this off, it will be DC 50 amps, DC till it reaches 100, straight DC, no pulse, I should say, and then it will pulse until the machine goes into its downslope routine. So that's a feature which can be adjusted. So I've actually got that set to on. PAU, this is the average value pulsing. Uh, pulse average, PAV, I should say. Um, this is a feature that is a pulse feature which is available on the machine so it's either one or the other and it's when this light is green so average value pulsing is useful if you want to weld pulse weld to a value so if you've got our usual example we've we want a pulse weld we've got 100 amps here and 50 amps here we're on we're on current on high current peak current for one second and we're off for a second and that's a pretty easy mathematical calculation you've got 50 amps for a set uh, 100 amps for a second 50 amps for a second and then obviously your average of those is like 75 amps it's in the middle um, it becomes a lot more tricky when you're talking about like various pulse settings which you know um, a lot more involved so you can tell the machine that you want to weld a you want to pulse weld at you know 100 amps and you want the the peak current to be a certain amount of time um, it will modify the other parameters so that you are welding at that current level so that's of use to people that are generally work working to a welding procedure or something like that so that could be a a way in which an operator, a welder or an inspector would be able to be assured that um, 
the job has been done per the procedure. Uh, all right. This is TIG hot start. Oh, sorry, TIG high frequency start, soft or hard switching. So when you push the push the trigger button and the high frequency arc jumps from the tungsten to the job. Um, this is set to a soft ignition. You can turn it off so it's a much more crisp or sharp ignition to the job. Um, personal preference on this one, I guess. Um, its factory setting is in the on position like it is now. Um, you can you can turn it off if you wish. Uh, next setting is SM. Uh, you're sort of limited with the letters that they can fit on a screen like this, but uh, this is Spotmatic. SM is Spotmatic, so um, you can uh, have the current ignition by the contact with the workpiece. So when you're in Spotmatic mode, which is this light will be red and flashing, um, you can choose to have the. We might just still go. Um, when you're in spotmatic mode, you can touch off, lift up at high frequency jumps across as a spot weld for a known period of time. And it'll be live, and you can go to the next point and do the same, do the same, do the same. Now, spotmatic having that. Um, Ignition by contact with the workpiece that can be turned off for one reason or another if you want in my opinion It sort of defeats the purpose of having spotmatic to begin with because realistically if you wanted to push a button every time You wanted to do a spot weld you'd probably just go to spot arc but anyway um, Having buttons to push and variables you can adjust is a good thing um, You've got that option whereas you know some machines you might not All right Next one, STS is currently off. This is the spot time setting. So when you go into the spot, spotmatic modes and spot arc, um, you've got a, a number which it uh, flashes up. So uh, if you have it in the on mode, this will mean that when you dial it up, it is in a range from five milliseconds to 999 milliseconds. So from like a really, really, really short time up to 999 milliseconds, which is just under one second. Um, if you turn it off, like I had it, uh, then it changes the time period from, uh, sorry, 0 0.01 seconds to 20 seconds. So you've got, you've got the option to tell it how long your spot time would likely be. This just saves, you know, I guess, having to scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll um, to get that level of uh, resolution for a desired spot time. Uh, next, we've got SSP. This is the uh, process activation setting according to the manual, which I'm reading. Uh, I have no idea what this means. Um, there's a section on it in the book, but it hasn't. I haven't, I haven't need, needed to amend this at all. Um, at the moment, this is the ignition current. So, um, at the moment, the uh, welding current polarity during the ignition phase, so after post flow, but before you're starting amperage, is currently set to DC negative. Um, you can change this to DC positive if you wish. DC negative works for us. All right, so that's the uh, configuration menu. That's a lot of the welding related processes that have been changed. So bumping back up to the CFG menu. So we've looked at the torch modes. We could end it here if we wanted by hitting on this button. Torch modes, configuration modes. The third one is the block job menu. So you can actually tell this machine to, out of the eight available jobs, you can lock a job out. So um, that might just be a really good way to keep your 
favourite settings locked so that no one else in the workshop plays with them. Uh, or it could be a way for, a, I guess, a, you know, a supervisor or someone to make sure that people who are ticketed to do a certain type of job don't do the job using that machine. Um, yeah, so that's uh, one way to do it. Um, then you've got um, this is the the lock number and machine code. You can amend up and down, which uh, really doesn't uh, matter for us at the moment because we're not looking to set a code. Next one is access control. So this is COD. So this is a, a code which you can use to uh, allow access to the machine. So you can choose a three digit number like we did on those previous clicks. Um, now, next one is SRU. So this is a service menu. So um, the service menu, I think, gets accessed by technicians that are doing any maintenance on the machine, if needed. Um, there's not a lot of information behind that. This is the fan test. So you can actually get the machine to trip to fire the fans. So just if you, I guess, want to know whether the fans are working. There we are, the fans are running. There's airflow through the machine. So that's just a way to test them. Version is the machine version number. So the software version. And this is probably one of the more useful um, features of the machine, it's called dynamic power adjustment. So in Australia we've got the uh, obviously 240 volt power from the wall outlets um, and depending on the requirements of the machine would de re depend on what um, power plug the machine gets fitted with. Um, most standard um, consumer items uh, have a 10 amp plug and as such there's a 10 amp fuse in the circuit breaker. Um, uh, a lot of welding machines run what's called a 15 amp power plug which is a different designed plug and as such they would have a 15 amp breaker in the circuit board. So at the moment I've set this to 10 amps uh, you can set it up to 16 amps. So 10 amps is like it, the machine will be throttled to some extent either through its duty cycle or through its um, maximum available output um, but Given that I'm running in a shed here, um, I do have 15 amp outlets, uh, but I also have a lot of other things running in this shed. So I like to make, make sure that I'm not overloading my circuit here. Um, to be honest, in, it hasn't uh, held me back yet. Um, so that's just a way in which you can put a software control on the power that the machine available, has available to it. So going back to the end feature, if we hit the end button, then the machine goes back to its normal mode, so we're out of the configuration menu now. So that was probably a whole heap of information, lots going on, but that gives you an understanding of what the uh, what the adjustability level of this machine is, which is just amazing. Um, you've got all these features available to you. So with that in mind, we'll finish this one up and um, come back for another exciting instalment. Until then. Have a good one.